YouTube. Made a couple changes. Got rid of all the junk on the board. Shrunk it down to just them small components. I'm also going to be changing out the brake switch enclosure. I'm going to be using one of these Carlon boxes. These things are pretty freaking cool. Home Depot. I got a couple nuts and bolts in there. That's what you're hearing rolling around. But uh, yeah, I did a significant changeover. I went from the digital meters to the analog meters because I don't want to have a secondary power supply like I had to do for that one. Now I can come out here and get instant voltage readings, even without power. Okay, it's actually really cool. This setup here is pretty neat. I, uh, <clears throat> I'm pretty uh, impressed by it. I bought a couple of DC meters here. I got a couple... Yeah, blah, blah, blah. I got the volt meter, DC volts 0 to 100, and DC amps 0 to 100. And the shunt, the DC shunt is inside this box. This is a Carlon 6x6x, I think, 4-inch box. Yeah. As you can see here, coming out of my brake switch, it comes into the rectifier. Out of the rectifier, it goes... I don't know if we're going to be able to focus on this here. Oops. Anyway, out of the rectifier comes into the box right here. This is the in DC inside. Okay, and there's two lugs. And because it's a plastic box, I have two bolts coming out, which I'll show you the inside of this thing when I, uh, when I show, finish up this part. Um, goes through a 100 amp shunt inside the box on the, the bottom here. There's a shunt. Run right inside here, and on the top is a 250 amp ANL fuse and a fuse holder, kind of like this one here. Uh, th these were what I was actually using to hold my shunts because they uh, they didn't have holders with them, so I bought two of them and made them my holders. But then after it goes through all that junk, it comes out and right into the grid tie inverter. And from here, once I get my second grid tie inverter, from here it's going to go into um, the normally closed side of the relay into this one. And then from here as well, it'll go into the 10 to 22 to 60 volt grid tie inverter. Um, let's see. Well, let me pop the cover open here and then uh, I'll show you what it looks like inside this. Okay, now I got the cover off. As you can see, it's a Carlon. I think Carlon, right? Carlon, yeah. Carlon, it's a solid enclosure. Once the cover is on it, if you don't drill any holes, it's watertight, airtight, bug tight, every tight you can think of. I actually had it sitting out in the sun for a while when I first got it. I forgot to leave the screws loose, and when I started taking the screws out, it act the lid actually popped open. You hear it depressurizing because of all the heat. But uh, yeah, here we go. This is what I got. <clears throat> that ANL fuse holder is all acrylic or plastic or whatever they make them out of. And I have it riveted to, through to the bottom of this Carlon box. And then you can see it comes in on the side here. Ooh, focus. Come on there, focuser. Okay, it comes in on this side. goes into the the ANL, I call them anal fuses because, you know, ANL, haha, <laughs> I know, I'm funny. And then it comes into, from the anal fuse, into the second lug, the output lug, and then directly through. It's a 5 16 by 18 bolt, one inch long. So I have it set up so I can remove my wires without removing the studs from the box. And here, here's a better view of what it looks like inside. Um... Yeah, and there's the negative side, comes through, goes through the shunt, 
it's a small shunt, 100 amp, 75 millivolt. And then it goes in through these little wires here into the back of the meter and the voltmeter. The, I have to reverse this, I think. I don't know if I want to keep it this way or if it even really matters that much, which I don't think it does. But I'm monitoring the output before it gets to the grid tie inverters. So that's after power is sucked out of the shunt and power is sucked out of the the fuse. Any little bit that any little bit of voltage loss that goes through. I'm measuring the voltage going into the grid tie inverter right here. Okay, I got my holes cut out. I didn't cut the holes out very well. I don't really care because you can't see it from the outside anyway. But uh, but that's that's basically it. So I'm gonna pop this up here like that. Let's put the screws in it, close it up, <clears throat> and that's it. That's all there is to it. Just a matter of putting a couple screws in there and done. So I'm going for the ultra clean look. The ultra clean look. I think uh, next move is gonna be brake switch. I may do the brake switch in a Carlon box, a plastic box, or I may go with a slightly larger enclosure that'll let me put the the rectifier even inside an enclosure. So it's all pretty much together, but I see I like to keep them open to the air. Yeah, I know I got it screwed to plywood. And it does get warm. It hasn't gotten too warm lately, but because we got some light winds today. I mean it's no batteries on this system, so you can see I'm getting low voltage. And it's barely spinning out there. I mean, it, it's been gusty today, so I've been getting some power. But uh, that's, the, that's the most concealed setup I've gotten so far. I also got rid of the bus bars. I don't know if you've noticed that. But I'm trying to keep it clean and small. And each wind turbine I get installed is going to have a similar setup and once I finally get the setup that I really want then I will start adding more wind turbines and you know this will be my all-in-one deal here no dump controller no dump resistive load no charge controllers nothing this is straight from the wind turbine through a fuse a shunt right into the grid uh, I really hope someday somebody comes out with a system where we can go from three-phase AC directly into the grid. AC to AC. I mean, I know there's there's got to be a way to do it. I'm sure it just hasn't been figured out yet transformers or something and maybe some small circuit i don't know i am not an electric electronics engineer or anything like that i don't know i'm just hoping there's someday somebody comes out with an ac to ac not a three-phase ac grid tie inverter to ac output because i know that i think they're rectified internally and then you know convert it to dc and then back to ac again we got to skip going to dc that's what I want to see. I want to see three-phase wild AC to single-phase. I'd like to see it go a single-phase 220 because then if you're running just one wind turbine on, say, you got a 2,000-watt inverter, you know, you're dumping 2,000 watts on a single leg coming in from the utility. So you're kind of you're running a little bit unbalanced. If you're pulling more from one leg than the other, you know, I, I, that's, a lot of utilities consider that dirty AC or dirty, dirty power, and they, I don't know about in, where I'm from here in Pennsylvania, but I know some uh, utilities charge you more for dirty electricity, like if your power factor, I believe, is less than 90 or 0.9 or however they measure it, they actually penalize you, so, so that's just something to consider. You know, 220, at least you're dumping equal amounts, hopefully, into, you know, say you're th dumping 1,000 and 1,000 into each leg of your 220 coming in from the street. That'd be kind of cool. 
goes. But anyway, I'm getting off topic here. That's the latest update.